Hey there, Facebook Live, here with Owen Broder of Cowboys and Frenchmen. Hey, Facebook. We are going to talk a little bit about Owen's last release and uh, kind of see what's going on with them now. So, Owen, your last release was Cow with Cowboys and Frenchmen, your group that you co-lead with. With Ethan Helm. So, Ethan Helm and I co-lead this quintet called Cowboys and Frenchmen, mm -hmm. and our last album released on uh, Outside In Music was Rodeo, um, and that came out, uh, I guess, at the end of 2000, or um, no, at the end of 2015. 15, yeah. yeah. Right. Uh, and so, now we've been, you guys did a great CD release show at Joe's Pub. Yeah. And then, uh, what's been happening since the CD release till now with Cowboys and Frenchmen? And you had a pretty big gig not too long ago. Yeah, well, the most, uh, the biggest thing that we've done recently, uh, this summer we were at the Washington, D.C. Jazz Festival as a, we were one of three finalists in the D.C. Jazz Pre, um, along with Mark Meadows and Ulysses Owens. Um, and that was, that was a great time. It was uh, an amazing day. You know, it was just beautiful, beautiful weather. A lot of people out there listening to some good music. Um, so that was that was fun. So that, what was the DC Grand Prix? So this is people don't know. Yeah, so the DC Jazz Prix is this year was their first of uh, first year at this competition, and its mission is to support um, younger groups, kind of up and coming on the scene, um, and with you know the winner, they'll they'll pick they pick one winner, and the winner receives uh, some money and support um, for a year. You know promotion and uh, that I know they were kind of working out the details, but I think their goal was to uh, help them book some you know tours and oh, nice. and other other things to kind of kickstart their career. Nice. And this was the first year of that. Yeah, this was their first year. And it was part of the bigger DC Jazz Festival. Right. Okay. Right. And where did you guys perform? We performed uh, in DC on uh, on the stage at the I think it's just called the Grounds. Or maybe, yeah, something like that. But uh, right in right in downtown is very cool. Nice. Right on the water, so you get you get some uh, some of that lake effect. <laughs> so what else is happening with Cowboys and Frenchmen? What are you guys what are you guys up to? So we're actually we've just started talking about um, working on our second album. Um, we've already got a whole book together, so uh, the music is already written, which is great. So now it's. Uh, the hard part, which mm -hmm. is getting getting all the dates and everything organized sure. logistically. Nice. Um, but we're we're really excited about it. We're uh, we've got some we've got a new studio in mind. Um, we're aiming we're aiming to record at the latest by February, uh, two thousand seventeen. Oh, cool. Uh, nice. So hopefully you know hopefully we'll have some more information on that pretty soon. And I think also before the DC festival. You and Ethan also did some of the music from the record somewhere else, right? That's right. So Ethan and I went to Texas for a week, and we played we played a couple gigs. We did a few clinics. Um, we were at what was that venue called? We were at a venue in Fort Worth. Um, this really nice venue, kind of a speakeasy vibe. Um, and then we went to the uh, NASA conference, which is the North American Saxophone Alliance. Uh, it has nothing to do with space. Um, but we were there. We played. Uh, Ethan submitted us as a as a presenter, so we were a presenter there and uh, played for a great room of fellow saxophonists and uh, saxophone educators, um, and saw some other great music. Ethan also had his own uh, big band piece performed by the uh, by the college there, and he was a guest soloist um, along with Rich Perry. Um, nice. And then uh, we went back and did a clinic at SMU. Um, with another at Southern Methodist University with another Eastman um, alum, Dylan Smith. Oh, right. He's the director there. Nice. And then, uh, so what's been happening with you? I know uh, you have Cowboys and Frenchmen, but you have a bunch of other projects. So what else are you working on right now? Yeah, well, um, you know, this summer was a, was a pretty fun summer. We were doing some stuff with Anak Cohen, um, the Newport Festival. We just, uh, we just recorded an album of her music. Um, so that's been great. I'm working on uh, my own project, which is going to integrate uh, various 
subgenres of American roots music, uh, folk, Appalachian, uh, early blues, that kind of thing, with a jazz octet. Um, so, working on getting that together. Um, I'm producing an album for composer Wayne Alpern. Um, that should be, we're going to be recording that in early October, so that, that should be coming out soon. Um, I'm gearing up for uh, a musical theater project uh, with the musical Bodyguard, which is coming over from West End in London. Mm -hmm. um, and we're going to be doing a stint in New Jersey for about a month and a half, and then uh, going on the road. That tour is actually a year and a half. Oh, man. Okay. Yeah, so we'll, we'll see how long I last on that. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Well, let's, let's kind of go back to thinking about your last CD, last uh, Cowboys and Frenchman release, Rodeo. If you haven't picked it up, you can grab it today. Make sure you do that. And uh, so back back to that group, you know, you and Ethan kind of co-lead the band. How exactly does that work? Do you guys like flip a coin to make all your decisions? Or Mostly, or yeah. No, uh, it's actually it's a it's great having you know having someone else to help with everything. Um, we bounce creative ideas, logistical ideas. Um, you know, we just kind of have our own checks and balances that, uh, you know, because we're coming from a very similar creative, uh, place, mm -hmm. um, and also just have similar goals for ourselves and the group, um, it pushes the group in the right direction, um, kind of focuses our ideas, you know, I, I think we each have our strengths and it helps kind of focus our, our goals for the project, um. Yeah, and it's really helpful. Have you have you found to be any challenges having two leaders instead of one? Because sometimes when you have a band, sometimes there can be some differing opinions amongst. Right. That leads to. Yeah, in terms of differing of difference in opinions, that hasn't been an issue at all. Um, the biggest challenge is, you know, we're we both have our own stuff outside of Cowboys and Frenchmen, and you know our availability outside of that is sometimes difficult to lock in. Mm -hmm. um, and, and line up because we don't want to particularly with Ethan and I we don't want to play without you know with that project we don't want to play without each other gotcha um, so you two are kind of the main link to that project. right and the other Matt Ethan O'Reilly and Chris are all uh, you know irreplaceable and we work very hard to make sure that they are there for the gigs as well mm. um, but you know as with any project it's impossible to have everyone there all the time um, but we try to make sure that Ethan and I are both there for everything that we do because we are the co-leaders. Mm -hmm. And that's that's sometimes a challenge because Ethan's very busy with other things. I've got other things going on as well. So just lining up our schedules can be a challenge. Totally. Um, so talk a little bit about writing for two saxophones. I know sometimes you guys, you guys could both play multiple woodwinds on the record. How does having two of you saxophonist in the front line affect the compositions. Right. Well, on, on Rodeo, um, both of us were almost entirely on, on alto, mm -hmm. with a couple um, overdubs mostly on clarinets and flutes. Mm -hmm. um, but, uh, and so, and so for, that, for that album, we got to explore how two altos can work together in a, in a compositional standpoint. Um, and so, you know, on one, al on one track, um, the altos are kind of they have this part where there's a line that moves through the entire phrase and each of us are taking a portion of it so that it sounds seamless mm -hmm. which kind of overcomes the challenge of saxophone or any wind instrument where we have to breathe Sure. Um, so it kind of creates a seamless effect that one saxophone couldn't, couldn't do otherwise mm -hmm. um, and then you know just the timbre of two altos is something that we've found to be kind of unexplored territory sure. um, so we've kind of we've enjoyed finding different things that work with that sound um, on our next project we're looking to uh, utilize some of our like you said replace you know, the other woodwinds as well so um, I work a lot on Barry so I'm hoping to play some more Barry on the next album mm -hmm. um, Ethan I think is going to be playing some, some more of the saxophones and woodwinds um, so we're kind of Branching out a little bit there for the next project. Nice. And it'll increase your luggage uh, allowance. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, exactly. 
uh, I'll be charging myself more for cartage. Yeah, right. right. And how about now the title of the record is Rodeo. Right. Uh, so where where is that coming from? Um, well, you know, our, the band's name is Cowboys and Frenchmen, uh, and Cowboys has, just the, just the word Cowboys has a lot more mileage, we've found. Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> it's a lot easier to find things, uh, that, that are relatable to Cowboys uh -huh. and Frenchmen. Oh, well. Um, and, I don't, so, so that's kind of what we've been capitalizing on, and, uh, and Rodeo is exciting. I don't know, we, we came up with a list, and that was what we liked the best. Rodeos are exciting. Rodeos yeah. Are I've been to one. Well, you've been to one. Yeah, when I was like, I've never been. it it was uh, there was a lot of popcorn, a lot of. Um, <laughs> I, I was, you know, like eight, so the beer was unappealing at that point. <laughs> and what about the band name? Where did the band name come from? The band name Cowboys and Frenchmen uh, comes from the title of a David Lynch film, short film called The Cowboy and the Frenchman. Um, David Lynch is a is a film is a film director uh, who I'm a big fan of. Um, and kind of just like Cowboys and Frenchmen in the band, uh, he's very quirky and has kind of a very unique way of shooting his films. Um, and we find that there's some similarities there in that he, every film of his kind of operates within a genre, mm -hmm. like The Cowboy and the Frenchman, for example, is his interpretation of a Western film. Um, but it... All of his films have this very Lynchian stamp on it that make it very obviously his. Mm -hmm. um, and so we like to say, you know, he's like us. He's got one foot in, you know, firmly planted in the genre and the other is kicking down the genre's doors. You know, uh, so we we like that similarity that we have. Um, and, you know, maybe even more than that, we just kind of thought the name was funny and cool. I, th yeah, I think it's a good name. It's yeah, a it's a memorable name. Right, it's, it's definitely better than the Owen Broder Quintet. Right, right, <laughs> the Broder Helm Quintet. <laughs> exactly. Um, so now that you've kind of gone through this whole experience, you had the band, written the music, tried to get rehearsals, tried to get everybody together, put the record out, had a publicist, had some challenges with the with the album, uh, overcoming all of that, getting it out, and now you're on to round two. What did you learn in the process that maybe some other musicians that are watching could, could benefit from? Hearing? Yeah, well, um, you know, through doing that and then a few of the other recording projects that I'm working on now, um, I mean, the biggest thing that I learned is the, the questions to ask, mm. you know, and, and to know that there are going to be surprises along the way. Um, and you've kind of got to allow for that when you're preparing the budget. Sure. Um, you, you know, I've, I've learned what musicians are willing to do and not willing to do mm -hmm. for whatever money is available, you know. Mm -hmm. um, and we've kind of learned what's, what's worth the investment. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the, the biggest, or I guess the newest part of our experience in, in doing the first album was working with a publicist. Sure. Um, we didn't know what that would bring us mm -hmm. uh, you know what that would result in um, we've never you know even communicated with a publicist before and so now we know that you know from from working with Carrie who did a phenomenal job with our first uh, first recording um, we've gotten some great uh, reviews mm -hmm. uh, it did very well on the radio um, it was number one on the CMJ jazz charts for several weeks in a row right, right. Um, so it definitely got the album out there and um, kind of created some hype for it. So now we know what that's about and the values of that. Mm -hmm. um, so in, in our future projects, we can weigh that in our in, as we prepare the budget and focus on you know whether we want to do more of press or radio sure. or both again. Mm -hmm. um, and you know we've now we've worked with a recording studio and a mixer and mm -hmm. a master. Um, and so we know what to expect on those fronts. So, I mean, in short, now we just, we know what to expect, um, and moving forward, we can make decisions based on what we've seen results from. And, uh, what specific, do you have any specific advice for someone who's been thinking about getting a project together but hasn't done it yet? Well, I mean, I think the first step 
in preparing to you know to do a recording project uh, after making the music and having you know having your own uh, artistic vision kind of set in place is really create a very realistic budget because you know I mean uh, you can you can make a budget that's ideal and uh, you know it'll it'll look really nice but uh, plan plan higher sure you know yeah. so create a realistic budget. Um, and have an outline plan with rehearsal dates, uh, get the recording studio dates set, um, and uh, you know, have all those things are important. Maybe more important than anything else is getting those uh, recording dates set because that's a deadline. Right. That's something that you it's have. Right, you know, you have to get it done by then. Um, and I think that's the hardest part about any project, just getting, getting started. Getting started and getting it done. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> right, right. And so I think giving yourself a deadline. I know I know people work differently and sure. different things motivate different people, but for me, having a deadline is so helpful because I think when you when you have a definitive end of a project, you can make sure that you get it done within that time. If you have an open ended amount of time, you're gonna take yeah. your time. And it's yeah. gonna it's gonna draw out expands to fill exactly. the available available time. Exactly. Now you, you mentioned something kind of interesting I wanna go back to. You said have a clear artistic vision. How did you go from jazz student to having kind of a, a vision? What does that mean to you, having an artistic vision, and, and what is yours with this project? Right. right. Well, I mean, like we talked about, um, Ethan, Ethan and I bounce all of our ideas off of each other, mm -hmm. um, and this this particular project kind of evolved from just having a set, having an hour long set of music that we were playing with friends. Mm -hmm. um, the band started out just doing a reading session in our apartment. Mm -hmm. uh, we were roommates for several years, uh, along with the drummer in the band, Matt Ott. Um, so it just started out you know, reading reading a, a set of music that uh, we felt was very cohesive, and you know, even coming from two different composers, um, it just felt like a cohesive set of music. So it came from that to playing, one gig and that went well we had fun we liked who we were working with um not only ethan and i but all of the people involved matt on um matt ethan o'reilly and chris um just good stage presence good or you know uh chemistry mm -hmm. stage chemistry and, sure. and we're all good friends so just enjoying working together so we uh booked more gigs played the music got tighter and we felt like this was something that we wanted to put on a cd to kind of uh, just mark where we are in our careers at that point. Mm -hmm. Totally. Um, sometimes I think, you know, like as, as jazz students, we hear this kind of word, you think of Miles Davis, what's it, you know, his artistic vision, how it changed over the years. Do you, do you guys feel like you've moved from something starting at this first one to now you're talking about making another album? Has it, has it evolved at all? Is there something specific that you guys are trying to achieve. I know you have the two saxophone sound, you're talking about exploring two altos, and now you're going to add some other woodwinds into the mix. Is there any other maybe compositional influences that are creating a unique vision for you guys? Yeah, well, one thing that Ethan and I both have in common compositionally um, is that our music is is very arranged. You know, there's a lot of written material. Okay. Um, but it also allows for a lot of improvisation. Mm -hmm. And it's, you know, I, I think it's you know kind of like a jazz orchestra for five people you know um a couple of the reviews commented on how big the sound of a small group oh. can be mm -hmm. um and so that's that's kind of what we like to write for we like to create kind of you know each piece is kind of a world mm -hmm. that we like to explore and there's a lot of like i said there's a lot of written material but there is a lot of room for improvisation, and so we're kind of capitalizing on that and moving forward with that same, um, you know, mission, I guess. Cool. Um, yeah. Nice. No, that's great. That's great. Um, so who are you? some of your guys' big influences, either playing or otherwise? Right. Well, compositionally, um, you know, coming from the jazz orchestra side of things, mm -hmm. like we both really respect um, Maria Schneider and Jim McNeely, sure. um, Bill Holman. Mm -hmm. Bob Brookmeyer, that you know, those 
coming from that larger ensemble world. Mm -hmm. um, we also really admire Kneebody. That's been a that's been an influence of ours since since we were in school. Sure. Um, Another Eastman. Eastman right. Group. Right. More Eastman people. Um, and also, they kind of come from a similar similar place of having a lot of written material that incorporates a lot of room for improvisation as well. Totally. Um, we're, we're big fans of Snarky Puppy. Um, Donnie McCaslin, uh, I'm a big fan of Rich Perry. Um, both of us have studied with Rich and, and uh, worked, with, worked with him in um, various capacities. Um, yeah, I don't, there's, there's so many people that kind of influence our creative process individually and what comes out of both of us ends up being kind of similar. Cool. So, outside of e Owen Broder, musician, baritone saxophone, demigod. <laughs> too much <laughs> what, credit what, there. <laughs> what, uh, what other stuff have you been into lately that's not music? Well, actually, this summer has been uh, a lot of fun you know, outside of music. Uh, I've been doing some traveling, um, spending a lot of time outdoors. Uh, I, I, went to, um, I went to Michigan for a week, just hanging out on the lake there. It's beautiful. Um, it's a really nice break from New York City. Uh, you know, just surrounded by so much green. Mm. And, uh, you know, the sunsets there were pretty incredible. A lot of great food. Um, because of some individuals I've been hanging around recently. I've been getting into vegan food. I am in oh. no way going vegan, but uh, <laughs> uh, I've been appreciating that that diet, you know, a little okay. bit more. So I've uh, been checking out some vegan restaurants. Oh, are you now cooking vegan food as well? I'm not cooking you're, at all. Oh, you're but, not cooking. Uh, <laughs> but some people I'm hanging out with are cooking vegan, and I happen to benefit from, from their cooking. Oh, very nice. Okay. Yeah? I, I, I'm not vegan. I'm I can understand, yeah. I, I don't think I'd be even kind of dipping my feet in yeah. if it weren't for gotcha. the company I'm keeping. I see. I see. Yeah. So is there any other new things coming up that you wanted to highlight or any gigs coming up you wanted to mention? Well, Cowboys and Frenchmen is going to be at Cornelia Street on September 27th okay. uh, at 6, 6 o'clock, so be sure to be there. That We're going to we're gonna be playing a lot of the music that's going to be on our next album. Okay. Um, cool. We're kind of using that as a, as a launching point and, and to kind of solidify that set. Um, what else? Most of what I'm doing in the near future is recording projects, cool. which, is, which I'm excited. I'm having a great time kind of working on those and preparing those logistically and uh, you know, I get to work with a lot of a lot of my favorite people. Um, so yeah, but that's kind of what's on my horizon. Great. I do get to go to Wyoming for a, for a weekend. I'm playing a, like a corporate thing there. Oh, so nice. I've never been to Wyoming. I'm excited about what that. What part? I have no idea, but it's with Amos Rose, another Eastman guy. Okay. Yeah. Um, and Reuben Allen's going to be playing. Uh, you know, more Eastman people. Uh, so we're going to be doing some hiking out there. So nice. more more outdoors, which I'm loving. That's cool. So yeah. I hope you have better luck than the last time I was in Wyoming. Oh, what yeah. was that about? We got stuck there because they closed they closed the highway in between going from Boise to Denver. Oh wow! Through Wyoming, we got stuck. And then, uh, long story short, the band leader had to charter two private jets to get us to the gig late. But I mean, I hope you have better could, luck. Could have had worse endings though. <laughs> private jets got to be nice. Well. Yeah, right. <laughs> but a stressful day nonetheless. I can imagine. But uh, so thank you, Owen, for yeah, thank you, Nick. hanging out. And uh, if you missed some of this, go ahead and jump back to the beginning. You can see hear all about Cowboys and Frenchmen Rodeo and September twenty twenty seventh twenty seventh at Cornelia Street Cafe here in New York. And watch out for another album from these guys. And thanks for watching. We'll see you see you guys next time. See ya.